In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do some simple procedural terrain generation using Perlin noise so that we can get our Minecraft style world. We still have our three layers, we just have grass on the top. There we go, here's some ground, and then you can see some stone underneath, right? I thought that'd be pretty cool. Ken Perlin created this in the 80s while working on the movie Tron, and it's still used today, and we're gonna use it right now. Let's go ahead and get started. Now I'm gonna leverage off of the third video in my Making a Minecraft World playlist. I'll put the link in the description for that and the link in the description from the world that we created in that third video. You go to this URL and then you can get these three dots, edit in studio, and you're gonna open up that exact world so you can follow along exactly. Now we're gonna do all of our editing in the Terrain Manager. If we come over to the Explorer, go down to Server Script Service, Click on that little arrow to open up Server Script Service and you'll see Terrain Manager. Go ahead, double click it, open it up. And we already have some variables right here. I think I'm gonna change the terrain width, depth, and height though, right? Make it a little bit bigger of a world. So we have a 64, let's make it, how about 128 by 128? And how thick we make the world? Uh, how about 32, right? You might want to put something on the bottom so you don't dig all the way through the world, or you could just make this thicker. I think I had 64 actually in the demo. Yeah, let's try that. Let's add some other constants underneath our terrain height, width, and depth. And this is going to be for hills because right now we have a flat terrain. So how about we do local base height, right? And that will be the average height of our terrain. And then I'm going to do another one for hill underscore amplitude, that's gonna be how far above and below the base height we go. Let's just say eight for now. Let's add one more frequency, right? How hilly, how hilly do we want our world? This is gonna be a float and increasing the number is gonna make it more hilly. I'm gonna go with 0 0.08 for now. Now I'm also gonna add some safety rails for how high or how low our columns are in the world, right? We're making these, we're making these columns for our blocks that make hills. So I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call one of these constants min column height. I'm gonna make that two. I'm also gonna do one for the max, right? So I'll just do a control C, a control V. Let's make a max column height. We'll make that 22 and we can play with this. We're gonna need a seed so we can generate the same world every time if we want. You just change the seed for a new world. So when you're playing Minecraft, you could actually see the seed if you want the same thing or create a new one, right? So we got that. Uh, how about surface layering, right? Let's do local. Now I have homogeneous surfaces, right? So it's all grass, all ground and then all stone on certain levels, but we can change that. But for now, let's do grass layers, and I'll just make a grass layer of one, and then we're gonna have the ground layers, right? You can do that like two if you want. So we do that, gr ground layers, we'll say two. And now let's scroll down and make the most important function for our procedural terrain. And we're gonna call it the column height. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. Here's our block properties. We're not adding any new blocks yet, like iron or coal. We're gonna make the block the exact same way, so we don't need to change make block. Create terrain block, we're gonna modify a little bit, but down here above this loop, this set of loops, three loops, right? We're gonna make a function, we're gonna say local function, we're gonna call this column height. And we're gonna pass in the grid of the X and the grid of the Y, and we're gonna get our height back. So we want randomness in height, but we want columns that are close to each other to be similar in height. So the further away they get, the more they vary. This is where we're gonna use our purling noise. Now let's get our value for our Perlin noise. Say local n equals, well, we have this math library, math.noise, and look at that. We have it right in there. So we don't even have to do the math. We're gonna get our, our x coordinate on the grid, multiply it by the frequency, the y coordinate on the grid, which is gy, multiply it by the frequency, 
and then we're going to get this C value so we know where we are on our noise curve, right? So the closer we get in points, the more similar the points are. If we increase frequency, we're going to get larger deltas in our values for our columns, right? So just keep that in mind. I know it's a little bit tricky. Let's get another value for the height. We're going to calculate the height using our base height. And then we're going to add this to, right, math, oh my goodness, math.floor. I should round, but I'm going to do it old person style, right, for in, because uh, in, in respect for the Tron movie, right, we're going to do the floor times hill amplitude plus 0 0.5. I thought this would be kind of good to have because this is the old style of doing rounding, right? It's a little bit of a trick. Right now we have round, but if you ever see that, you'll know that that's going to give you uh, rounding. You're not always going to go to the floor because sometimes you're going to bump up past the halfway and then you'll do a ceiling, right? And if you don't know what that means, that's all right. We're just rounding. We're just rounding that number. All right, so that's gonna give us our height. What else do we need? We also need our clamps. So if H is smaller than the min column height, then H equals min column height end. And then we're gonna do one for the max too, right? We wanna clamp stuff that gets too, too crazy. So if the height is greater than max column height, I think we're good like that then we're going to make it max column height. That should work. Look at that tiny little function. That's going to do all of the randomness for our hills. Well, we do have to do one more thing. We have to return H. Now let's take a look at our loops that create the terrain right here. So here's our terrain width, our terrain depth. This is the X and the Z we need to change the height, right? Which is the third loop. Let's go right here. And then we'll say local top, I'll make that a capital, top Y will be the column height, right? And we're gonna pass in our X and our Z, right? So we got our X and our Z. Here, instead of using the terrain height to create our columns, we're gonna do top y cool and then right here in our create terrain block we're gonna have to modify this a little bit but not too much let's do comma top y pass that in let's go and find our create terrain block come up here ah uh, there it is and let's do a comma top y now this stuff is all fine right here, right? Because we're taking our grid space and converting it to world space. We've got to blockify it, right? And we have to do a little bit of something like that to that top Y. Let's do a local, how about a depth? Depth from top. And then we're going to get our top Y and then minus that GY right here, right? And let's go down here. We're gonna make some changes here. This is no longer a simple biome, right? Maybe simple procedural terrain generation, right? Just a little bit of a note. Let's change our if statements. So if, let's do depth from top because we want the top layer to be the grass, right? We'll say, how about grass layers? If it's less than grass layers, that looks good. I don't have to change anything there. What about this one? I have to change some stuff. So we'll say else if depth from top is less than grass layers plus ground layers. Do we have ground? There it is, ground layers. Then let's do that, All right? You wanna get rid of this? Now nah, let's keep them. Middle layers, and then we have else the bottom layers. I don't think we have to do anything different there. All right, let's go ahead and try this out. Let's hit play. It's gonna take a few seconds to load because we gotta create all those blocks. And now we have this kind of a cool procedurally generated terrain. We have a few of the pieces of ground sticking out. That's okay. Let's check to see if we have any errors. View output. 
Looking good. We got some stone underneath, right? Yeah. We got some stone here. Oh, we went right through the world. We could jump right on through. We might, might want to make that a little thicker. Sweet. Put water underneath there or something. Let's make some modifications to our parameters to get a different world, right? So let's go ahead and turn this off. Get rid of that. Terrain manager. Let's go to the top, right? So we could change our, we could change our, I think what I want to do here, hill amplitude. Let's make bigger hills. We'll go with 20, but the frequency less, more rolling hills. So I think for frequency, I'm going to do 0.02. Now you could play around with this. Remember, we don't have a lot of sophistication in our procedural terrain generation, but we do have some knobs that we can tweak for different worlds. Yeah, these are more rolling hills, right? So we have less exposed ground, but we can also use that praline noise to make this top layer more heterogeneous. And I think I'm gonna do it for iron deposits too, for our ground, right? For our uh, stone, All right? Let's see what we got underneath. Yeah, there's our ground, 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 stone. All right, that's pretty cool. I will see you in the next video.